By 1863, much blood had already been spilt in the farmlands and small towns throughout the land. Congress had also become a battlefield, with congressmen fighting over how to put the nation back together, while their relatives slaughtered each other in an escalating civil war. President Lincoln tried to stop the fighting by offering the South a compromise. He proposed that only 10% of Southern voters need petition for readmittance to the Union to be welcomed back. Too lenient, said Congress, which insisted on stricter terms. The federal government should revolutionize Southern institutions, habits, and manners. The foundations of their institutions must be broken up and relayed, or all our blood and treasure will have been spent in vain. Thaddeus Stevens. Pennsylvania congressman. We will never know if Lincoln could have worked with Congress on a unified policy for reconstruction of the southern states. On April 14, 1865, John Wilkes Booth, an unstable actor sympathetic to the Confederate cause, assassinated Lincoln at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Millions mourned as a funeral train carried the martyred president's body back to Illinois. With Lincoln's tragic death, the fate of the former Confederate states fell into the hands of new president Andrew Johnson from Tennessee, who had eight months to bring about readmittance of the southern states before Congress reconvened. Back in 1861, Andy Johnson had been the only southern member of Congress to oppose secession. Once a poor tailor, Johnson had hated the old slave aristocracy of the South. But the president was quick to pardon prominent Confederates and return their property. Within a few months, the former Confederate states had ratified the 13th Amendment, which banned slavery throughout the nation, and met enough of Johnson's terms to rejoin the Union and to send their newly elected representatives to the new 39th Congress. The South had elected four Confederate generals, 58 members of the Confederate Congress, six of Jefferson Davis's cabinet officers, and Confederate Vice President Alexander Stevens, all former secessionists, unrepentant, and unreconstructed. What's more, the new Southern legislatures had passed laws called Black Coats, which came close to recreating slavery in all but name. Northern uh, Republican legislators uh, were, were very displeased uh, by what had happened. And that was understandable when you think about it, simply because uh, they had uh, been engaged in a war for four years in which hundreds of thousands of lives had been lost merely to turn around now to see the people who had been responsible return to power. And so the Republican-controlled Congress refused to seat such persons immediately created a Joint Committee on Reconstruction to investigate the situation in the South to uh, embark upon a new a policy that would begin to create some guarantees that the former slave population would at least be granted at least some minimal rights so that their newly won freedom would have some actual substance. Claiming that this was the work of radicals out to destroy the Union, Johnson vetoed the legislation, and the battle was on. The heart of the Congress's plan was a new 14th Amendment to the Constitution. The 14th Amendment is one of the most complex amendments in the U.S. Constitution. It was a grab bag amendment that was an attempt by Northerners, by Republicans, to solve all the constitutional and political problems they were having with Reconstruction in one shot. So it was to establish citizenship rights for the former slaves and for free blacks that had been living here for years. It was to give legal equality to all of these persons, but also to give due process rights and equal treatment before the law to anyone, even if they weren't a citizen. And so the 14th Amendment proves to be a very important amendment to the Constitution. The southern states that had been in the Confederacy did not like this one bit because they did not want their former slaves to have political power. The southern states rejected the amendment. Rallying to their cause, President Johnson hit the campaign trail, haranguing voters to throw the Republicans out of office. 
but the voters sided with the Republicans, not Johnson. Back in Congress, they passed the Reconstruction Act of 1867, which reimposed military law, dividing the South into five military districts. Readmittance to the Union now would require ratification of the 14th Amendment, black political participation in the elections for state constitutional conventions that would then set up new state governments, and congressional approval of their new state constitutions. Radical Reconstruction had begun.